talk about uh, technology, fine art and design, and STEAM education, and how that fits into an overall school curriculum. In order to walk you through my thought process, I want to kind of engage in a backwards design model. Uh, when I design curriculum, I have to think about the outcomes. I have to think of the big picture. Where are we headed? And if we don't understand that clearly, then I don't know how to plan to get there. So how did we get to STEAM in education? Um, it started with the big question of how can schools prepare students for the future? And the general outcome of this question became the the idea of a 21st century education. And thought leaders uh, from around the country have met and discussed and have been discussing this for several years. And although their visions for the future may vary quite a bit, the fact is, is that they share a lot of common themes. So as a result, we can say with a great deal of confidence that we expect that students who are going to be successful in the 21st century will be able to devise unique solutions to problems, communicate their ideas clearly, collaborate across time and distance with technology as the tool of choice. So there's my big question. How does that relate to STEM? Well, we've got the T in technology. Where does the rest come in? When you talk about solving complex problems and you think about the future, in general, thought leaders agree that the skills that are going to be required to solve those problems are going to involve solid knowledge of science, technology, engineering, and math. So the expectation is that those STEM skills are what are going to drive innovation. And innovation out of these three, innovate, communicate, collaborate, has now become a national priority. Hence, a sudden desire to focus on STEM skills in education. So, I go back to my design curriculum and I say, well, what is the expected outcome then? If I'm going to implement STEAM EDU, I mean STEM EDU, what is my expected outcome? The outcome appears to be innovation. But there's a problem with that. Because very clearly, when you examine that closely, there's no straight line between STEM EDU and innovation. Teaching students Science is not going to teach them how to innovate. It's not going to happen. So how do you teach innovation? What do you need to give students to, so that they can become innovators? And when you think about that, creativity becomes the obvious answer. Great. So we need students to be creative. We need them to practice creativity. We can do this. And art is the means of choice that we're going to work to. Hence, STEAM EDU was born. Incorporating the arts into science, technology, engineering, and math will give students that creativity, provide them those skills that will allow them to be innovative. I've been following the STEAM movement for a few years, actually. And most of the models that I have seen um, for implementing STEM in schools, STEAM in schools, involves having uh, teachers across the board integrate the arts into their existing subject matter. So teachers attend workshops, and they STEAM workshops. And in these workshops, they learn how to take STEAM elements and infuse them into their very favorite lesson plans with the hopes that STEAM will spread throughout the school as a major concept to drive innovation. I actually propose a completely different model. I don't want the arts 
integrated into all of the subjects. I do not want the arts to be piled on top of an already packed curriculum. What I want is I want the arts to be the absolute core of the STEAM curriculum. I want it to be the foundation on which the STEAM curriculum is built. So if that's going to be my core, how then am I going to teach creativity? There is some debate on whether or not you can teach creativity, but I, from our experience, we know that you can. In order for students to be creative, they have to have skills, and they have to have knowledge. They have to know how to make stuff, or they can't create. They have to have experience with putting things together. They have to have experience with different types of materials. They need technique to be able to represent their ideas well, to do that collaboration, to do that communication. They need knowledge to draw upon for inspiration and knowledge in some you know, subjects like math and science to inform their work. So you can teach creativity. And not only creativity in its purest sense, but I'm looking at creativity in the context of the STEM model. How does art and design lend itself directly to STEM? Well, it's been doing that for hundreds of years. And fine art and design, you'll note, when students engage in fine art and design instruction, they engage in detailed observation and accurate representation. They learn about symmetry, pattern, line, shape, form, balance. Science, math. Add perspective, space, depth, dimension. More math. The use of working tools and the properties of various materials. You're, you are walking right into design. The procedural order for developing your designs. Where do you start? I had some students recently who, in a history lesson, needed to uh, create, to replicate, uh, really design their own mosaic. Most of the students started in the middle and moved outwards. Some of the students attempted the project from the outside in, and they quickly learned that it didn't work. So, Procedural order for developing designs is very important, and you're walking your way straight into engineering from there. At the end, when you have a completed project, you still need to be able to express your ideas and your concepts. But since, since the relationship between fine art and design and math and science and the physical world has already been established by the Renaissance masters many hundreds of years ago, I'm not going to spend any more time trying to reprove that to you again. I'm going to show you some examples of how that actually works. These are pictures of students who are engaging in detailed observation for the purpose of accurate representation. We do have students, we have various lessons through our art classes. This one in particular is with a Georgia O'Keeffe lesson. They examine the flowers in great detail. And if I move my bubble out of the way, you can see the, the tiny, tiny detail on the inside of the flower. This is an elementary school project. We're talking uh, second grade. <coughs> Students learn symmetry, pattern, line. I think that's fairly self-evident how they've learned that concept. And you'll note that it's personalized for them. Form and balance through constructing um, objects. Students learn how those objects need to be balanced out in order to still be functional. Perspective, space, depth, and dimension. This is actually, you really have to look at this picture. If you look at the stripes, um, that are the lighter color, they're not in black and white. You can actually see the child's 
actual face. And all of that's layered on top of a background in the back. The use of working tools. Our students work with many different types of tools. We work with um, uh, soldering, they work with wire, they work with plastic, they work with paper mache, they work with oils, paints, crayons. Um, it, it, the supply closet is bigger than my classroom. Um, they learn the properties of materials um, as they work with them and they build and design different um, activities, different projects. The procedural order for developing designs, uh, as the designs get more complex, students have to detail out, they have to plan in advance. How do I start? Well, I need some spherical scaffolding. You know, what's my design going to look like when I get done? Well, this is going to be a teapot with actual human limbs instead, you know, to replace certain elements. Okay, so they have to do a lot of planning. Now, some of you may say, well, well, you're not an art teacher. You may not have known that. I know that. I'm not an art teacher. So why would I advocate for art and design to be the core of the curriculum. And I teach technology, and it's my experience in teaching technology that leads me to know that the core should be art and design. Because I teach students the tools, how to use them, but I can't teach them how to express themselves. That's what they get from their art and design work. Let me give you some examples on the technology side of how that comes into play. This was a project where students had to create an avatar. Uh, this project was related to the study of the endocrine system. And they had to create an avatar that represented a specific part of that system. This would be the avatar representing the thyroid gland. So what happened is that students used digital art tools, they exported it, and dropped it into a PowerPoint for presentation purposes. You see the technology, but you clearly see the art. This was a plate tectonic study. This was actually an animation, an animated film, where the student created an animation to mimic the fault and the building falling and that type of thing and going through. Again. It's integrated into science. It's a demonstration of their knowledge. It's a demonstration of a concept, but it's through tech tools. And clearly, they needed art and design to be able to execute on that. This is a video game that a student created to um, explain the different types of clouds. And this is a video game that takes place in the biome of a forest. I included this one in particular. It's one of my favorites because the student decided to create dimension to a 2D video game by importing a custom background that she drew in the digital art um, software that we use. And so it just gave it a, a really neat look and feel. This is a study of a, an architectural study of a uh, church, a cathedral. During the Middle Ages, this was done in a 3D modeling tool. This is a cityscape. This has been created in a 3D modeling and animation tool for the purposes of exporting to our 3D printer. This is the, excuse me, this is the result <clears throat> here, you can see. And this is student work. This is, uh, this is fifth grader doing this level of work. Now, our technology program is obviously very successful. Um, and it's successful because of our art and design program. It's also successful because we have a one-to-one -one plus 24-7 program. One-to-one -one means that every child has their own computer. 24-7 means they take it home with them at night, on the weekends, on vacation, during the summertime. They have it with them all the time. 
Having a one-to-one -one program lets our children not just walk, not run, but they absolutely fly. I cannot tell you what a difference that makes to our program. So when you talk about STEAM, and you talk about STEAM EDU, and you talk about it in schools, if you want to be serious about it, technology, art, and design must form the core. It cannot be add-ons to existing programs. Thank you. Thank you.